I found this uh, Harry Potter video online by a uh, user called Shadow5920 entitled Harry Potter Equals Evil. Let's take a listen, shall we? According to a U.S. consumer research survey, over half of all children between the ages of 6 and 17 have read at least one Harry Potter book. Well, I wonder which survey that was. Many parents are thrilled by the prospect of their children taking an interest in reading. As they should. Other parents and educators view Harry Potter as the latest tool being used to disciple children into the darkest aspects of black magic. And how did they gather this exactly? Should parents be concerned that the alluring power behind witchcraft is being made to look innocent and is being targeted towards their children? Made to look innocent? Um, most of the people that I know that practice witchcraft, they go by a single tenet, and that tenet is, do as ye will, but harm none. So let's continue. Through the Harry Potter phenomenon. Oh, and um, how is it that uh, black magic is in Harry Potter again? Many argue that Harry Potter is just merely children's fantasy. It is children's fantasy. That's why it's fiction. And therefore it's harmless. The lie about this is... How is it a lie? That witchcraft is reality. Okay. Hidden children, dark arts. Oh. My deepest concerns and fears about Harry Potter is the teaching of human sacrifice. How does Harry Potter teach human sacrifice? Honestly. I have to admit there is one section in the first book. Well, not the first book, excuse me. The fourth one where uh, one character chops off his own hand and the same character cuts Harry and gets his blood while he's bound to a statue. But I don't think that's human sacrifice. At least my definition of it isn't. Pagan religions, Celtic religions. The sucking of blood from dead animals. I don't remember that in the book. Witchcraft. Possession by spirit beings. I don't remember that either. Satanism, blood sacrifices. Okay, there must be talking about a book that I don't know exists. Because I've got all of them, and unless there's a book that secretly came out that I... Uh, is strictly about Harry and his friends performing black magic, then I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, one rose out. Uh, yeah, which they strictly use at school. Oh, Latin words. So here are the, the Latin words are for the spells. There are some pretty innocent spells they use that require Latin words. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not sure what they're talking about. The children and the readers, to Harry Potter and all his teammates in the school, and the children that are reading the Harry Potter books, being introduced to the darkest and black arts, and if they're not... Uh, the only black arts that I think are being referred to in the books are, um, like the, uh, was it, uh, Uh, what are they called? Uh, the only thing I can think of that would be anything to do with black arts would be the uh, the curses you're re that are really illegal to use in the Wizarding World, which is the Cruciatus Curse, uh, the Killing Curse is another one. I really can't remember what it's called. Um, that's the only black arts uh, stuff I can think of. Um, 
which is really only done by uh, very bad people. Uh, very bad witches and wizards in the books. Um, so I, like I said, I don't know what they're talking about. Not reading, by the way, there are cassettes that Scholastic. Yeah, just about every book out there also has audiobooks. So, um, I don't know. Classic puts that. Calling on demonic possession of power. I wonder where that is in the book. And we know that there's such a thing as possession. So there's scientific, uh, journals on possession. Uh, Please point these to me. I'd love to read those. Because Baltimore possesses the Defense Against the Arts teacher in the... Um... If I remember correctly, Quirrell was not strictly possessed. Um... Baltimore shared his body. Um... That's probably what she thinks uh, possession is. Um, and the strictest sense, yeah, that is possession, but possession also means that the spirit has complete control over you, and Voldemort doesn't. I will uh, type out the little sections in the uh, underwear bar where it, it says, says it's just that, that he wasn't completely possessed by Voldemort. This way he's sucking the unicorn and back. Maybe that's where they're getting the whole uh, gut sucking, or not gut sucking. <laughs> sorry. Uh, maybe that's where they're getting the whole uh, goat sucking thing they were talking about earlier. Perhaps the curses in Harry Potter books aren't legitimate curses, but once again, they can go to the website. Um, they show a picture of a website that says, "Welcome to online curses, spells, hexes." Um. This is completely different than Harry Potter, I'd like to mention. Um, I'd like to see this website, just to see what it says. To get legitimate curses. So the element is... I don't know if they're legitimate. Just saying. Fear is taken away. How is the fear taken away? Uh, there's pretty some pretty scary shit in the Harry Potter books. Like I said, just saying. Thousands of young fans demonstrate their allegiance to Harry. By... Uh, yeah, because they're pretty hardcore fans. <laughs> um, I'm not really so hardcore, but I'm pretty big fan. I love the books. Taking the mark of the lightning bolt on their own forehead. Uh, those are those are ones that are usually like pretty childish. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the ones, usually they're like, you know, just for fun. Um, they're just, you know, they're either, you know, cosplaying or just being stupid. You know, not the kind of, you know, herpeter kind of stupid, you know, just wee kind of stupid, you know. <laughs> the lightning bolt is a mark of power from the god Thor. And I don't know it's a mark of power, but it is associated with Thor. It's also associated with um, quite a few other uh, uh, mythologies and religions. Jewish religion has something to do with the lightning bolt. Um, 